What's up guys, we're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. Mr. James Shue.com and we're here for a late night. We're here at night. We're here for night school. Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart. Hart. Yeah, um, a comedy that has arguably the two biggest comedians working in right now. movies right now. Uh, joining forces. Which of course is no surprise because when comedians do well, they make a bunch of movies and they try to pin them all together. You, you ride know, the we, wave. We see a lot of examples of this. The problem, as we pointed out last week, sometimes comedians don't always pick the best projects. You know, I always think of Melissa McCarthy, a uh, comedian who I love. Like, I think she is so funny, yet she has a track record of not making very good movies, you know? And the weird bit about that is she doesn't even pick those. She, like, <laughs> is in the making process of those with her husband, which is a bummer, but you know, there are some hit and misses. Kevin Hart, I think, is the same I haven't lied in, I enjoyed uh, much Melissa McCarthy lately. Right, no, lately? Yeah. Well, I'm really excited for the movie that she has coming out. Um, Will You Forgive Me, where she starts plagiarizing. I always think she would be, I always thought she'd be really good in a, more serious stuff, but yeah. I can't think of the last couple movies I really enjoyed her in. Um, but Kevin Hart, same thing. Um, God, I can't even think of so the wedding ringer like you know that wasn't very very good um, he's he's done a lot of stuff he was in uh, uh, think like a man um, I think think like a man too or he was just in think like a man too well, I don't know these movies that you know they're just there really to sell his name and they're they build a movie around him as a star right Captain like how can Underpants. we <laughs> Captain oh well Captain <laughs> Underpants did it very well critically financially everything so I mean that that is even one I can't knock him for but you know he has done these movies that are very meh right do you is there a Kevin Hart movie that you like I can't right? think of any <laughs> which is not good because he's done he's done quite a few mm -hmm. right um, so Tim anyway Haddish, though I first met her in Girls uh, Trip. Girls Trip. I thought that was amazing. Yes, which and she, she was, was getting like Academy Award buzz. She was for hilarious. that movie. She was nominated, you know, and, and uh, for a lot of awards for that movie. She was very hilarious. And then she was really raunchy, really in your face, and now she's the voice of and face of Groupon. You know, there's those Groupon advertisements yeah. everywhere. Uh, but why not put them together and join forces into a really big comedy? Um, what did you think of Night School? I can't believe how much I enjoyed this movie. <laughs> I was like dying of laughter, bro. I liked it a lot. More than I thought, because I thought, as we spoke of earlier, I was just going to yeah. be saying, yeah, it was funny, you know, there's some funny parts. I really actually enjoyed this film. I thought it was funny. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it was, it was um, I liked the way the movie flowed, you know? And then I thought she was hilarious. I thought he was funny. Yeah, and I, I liked it. And then the whole church, uh, church's chicken. Christian you know, chicken. Christian, yeah, I know, but church's chicken. Oh, uh, yeah. You know. Oh, I didn't even think about that, to be That's honest. That's what I figured. Oh, wow. Right? I didn't, no, I didn't even I didn't think, think about, about that. that. I yeah. figured that. Church's chicken, yeah, Christian's chicken. Clever. So, uh, I thought that all that, those little things were funny. I thought the night school cast the, his uh, co-students. Yeah. I thought that was funny. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. I have no complaints about this. I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, you know what's shot? I mean, to be, I'm with you. Maybe not onto the extent of how much you liked it, but I'm with you. I was was definitely kind of like, you know. I was expecting like a four or five out of ten. Yeah, I was I'm probably, leaving like a seven. Wow. Yeah, I enjoyed it. That's a strong. That's, yeah, that's, I enjoyed you know? it. I mean, I was definitely going and expecting to be like again these movies that are just kind of shaped around them. And, and you know what? I will say, like if, as a whole, this movie is not. I don't think it's very good. And to be honest, it's like a Disney movie or a kids movie for adults. And, and what I mean by that is that like the plot is like super thin. Like it's for a child that these all these kids are. I mean, well, all these adults are going together to get their GD. They all have their own issue. Like it is very structured as a kids movie. There's the 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 mean bad guy who is all this control. They have these really outrageous moments. So in that sense, it feels like a very kiddish movie. You know. Um, but I would also be lying to say if I was not laughing. Yeah, I was laughing the entire time. I, I mean, I, I will say like, um, do I think that you know the movie was really perpetuating that, or do I think that it was just you know um, moments in time where I think you know I, I mean the, the humor is there, right? And I think obviously it's because you have so many talented comedians working. I mean, they're not. It's not just Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart. You know, they have a whole slew of comedians working throughout this movie. And, um, you know, I I'd be lying to say if they weren't funny and they, they made me laugh. Um, I don't think it's a complete waste of time. I don't think it's a movie that I, I... I'm sure I will remember it more than any other Kevin Hart movie that I could think of at least off the top of my head. Um, I know... Oh, besides Central Intelligence and Jumanji, we're forgetting. Uh, you know, Kevin Hart, obviously, in those movies. But he's not the one that you kind of remember for it. 
you know, obviously The Rock and him are, are working together very well, but I mean, I, I found myself laughing quite a lot, and uh, you know, I mean, it's not a waste of time for sure. Hey, that's the point of a comedy, make you laugh, and I was laughing. Yeah, no, it's true, but I do think the movie was like way too long. Like, you know, it was near two hours, and it could you could have cut at least 30 minutes out of it to make it tighter. There's definitely issues, but if you enjoy Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart, you're not gonna dislike the movie, you're gonna laugh at them. You might be like, this movie's really stupid, because there are a lot of dumb things. For instance, there's like one part where the character uh, obliterates his arm. Like, the character completely shatters his whole entire arm and stuff like that, and we never hear from that again. There, there's no cash or anything like that. And there's a lot of, did you catch, because you're really good at this, did you catch how many times they were they were dubbed over oh, to make it PG-13? Oh, what the hell? PG-13? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the one thing I'll say. The editing of this movie was, was pretty was bad. Poor. Yeah, it was really, the yeah. editing was bad in multiple places. There's scenes where a character should be listening, like there's two characters talking, and this one's just kind of listening, but it's her voiceover going yeah. on. I mean, there's a lot of bad and mixing And the angles here. they they pick too, where you know that they're doing the dub, <laughs> and then they can't ju they just can't get the sound perfect because you can't. Yeah, it, it is that is. And I, we, I don't know if it's impossible, but it's yeah, it's, it's hard. And you could just tell it's, it's like, you know, they finish the cut and they're like. Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish yeah. watched it, and then they're like, "Oh no, we should throw this." And they do that, which is I understand, yeah. but God. And that they were probably going for an R rating, and you know, the first. I, I would assume PG thirteen because a oh, lot okay. of the like you know heavier curse words were cut off. Like there's one part where um, Tiffany Haddish calls a character a um, a mother heifer, and you see her mouth move and close when it's like not moving on screen so it kind of felt like you're watching editing tv like yes. that's what you know at sometimes again like you know and it's weird do they not just have another camera where you could just <laughs> have the back or something i guess no well i think i think the problem is that they went full through and they didn't want to pay money for reshoots so they just said let's dub it over that's Gosh. what i think happened you know, I mean, they probably were like, look, we're broke. We paid Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart. Like, we have no more money. The half the budget was already gone. <laughs> that that is the cool. budget. That is the budget of the movie. The rest of the cast made maybe a grand each. No, I mean, no, there's some really talented people in here. You know, a cast from SNL. Um, you know, that were probably paid, but that's where all their money went, for sure, into casting. Um, uh, but, so in those moments, like, the movie definitely has issues. No, but I, it I is funny. That. Yeah, no. And, yeah. and even that, though, if you're going, if you want to see these two, because you like these two as comedians, you'll laugh. I mean, I think there is really funny things. There are a lot of dumb things. Some jokes don't always land. Actually, a lot of the jokes don't land, but there are the moments. And Kevin Hart is just a funny guy. I've always liked Kevin Hart. I think he's a funny guy. Even in the bad movies, he tends to be funny, and he gets he gets you to laugh. He just has that energy. He just can do it. Um, and this movie is a perfect example. Even though I thought it, everyone in this movie, <laughs> everyone in this movie was really funny. They all had me cracking up. I'm just thinking about some parts of my head, and I mean, you know. It was funny. You know, I have a different rating system too, because when I go into comedies, yeah, and horror you, films, you're really tough on comedies. Yeah, in horror films, I just go into it. I don't care about <clears throat> being real or anything. Just make me scared. Yeah, that's the point of you making this movie for me. You know, so like when you see the person going down the the alleyway where they're not supposed to, and it's like so frustrating. I don't care about any of that. I just want to be scared. But in yeah. comedies, I just want to laugh. Yeah, I laughed. Well, and you know, of course, that's the thing, and it's definitely something to consider. Like, if you just want to go to laugh, of course, and you know, that's kind of the weird thing when it comes to criticism, where people are always like, ah, movie critics expect everything to be Academy Award winning movies, and of course, that's not true. You know, we have to look in in in, in terms of what the movie's meant to do and all that stuff, but. You know, just laughing also isn't everything. Like, if you have to look at the movie kind of as a whole, and you have to see, like, there are comedies that work both on a plot basis and a character basis that tend to be really, really funny and do all of those things. And while, you know, this is basically, you know, you go to these nice restaurants, right? You want a full meal, you appetize your dessert, everything's great. You know, sometimes you gotta run through the fast food, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, the, si the fries were kind of cold, but, you know, the meal was all right. It gets the job done. That's what, that's what night school is. That's a perfect way to explain it. Love it. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely. If you're a fan, go enjoy it. You'll definitely laugh. Or, I mean, I don't know. It's so rare that I, like, laugh louder than anyone else. And I heard you even chuckling a few times. And me and him tend not to laugh that much. Yeah. I, I we're we're a bit more harder funny. on comedy. So, the fact that we both liked it, you know, hopefully everyone else will, too. Love it all. Next week, <laughs> seven days from today. Two major releases. Venom. I am fat. That was not good. Pancreas. Yeah, do it. <laughs> How does he do it? We all fat them. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Um, and then we have uh, A Star is Born. That movie's getting ridiculous buzz, bro. Yeah. Fourth time around. 
This lady just came out of theater, your friend says she's seen it three days in a row. Yes. And she gives it a 9 out of 10. Yes. And then your other two friends, one gave it an 8 out of 10, the other one gave it a 9 out of 10. Yes. They all high ratings. Every single A Star is Born, the three previous three, most people think that there's one remake of a Barbara Streisand movie. It's not true. Some people remember the Judy Garland one, but there's one even before that. This is the fourth time this movie's been remade. All of them have done well um, critically, and even were, uh, I mean, two of them won awards in the Academy, one of them was nominated. So, I mean, all these movies do really, really well. So it's no surprise Bradley Cooper's like, uh, I think I'll uh, start directing. If I'm, if I'm gonna do one, <laughs> I think I'll start directing. If I'm gonna start with something, I'm gonna start with this one, the winner. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's not always the good thing, you know. Ask uh, Orson Welles, who made some really good movies, but after Citizen Kane, everyone was like, yeah, it was good, but it wasn't Citizen Kane, it wasn't. You know, you don't want to start that strong. But I'm interested to see, I've always been a fan of Lady Gaga. I think she's really talented. I'm, I'm really kind of interested in seeing her kind of stripped down, even though she's, you know, not been so blown up as of lately. She still does, you know, she kind of has these moments, but I'm excited to see her in a full two hour movie. Uh, Sam Elliott, I'm a really big fan of. Bradley Cooper, I'm a big fan of. So I, I think that could be really big. I love Tom Hardy. And let me tell you, a couple years ago, I walked into a movie not expecting much. And it was called Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> Ended up changing the game. So maybe, just maybe, Venom can change the game. Pancreas. <laughs> I will say the trailer. Lungs, I will heart. say the trailers are not doing it justice. But you know, I, and I and I hear it. Like you know, I hear some people. They see the trailers, like, oh, it's into it. But then there's just some really weird stuff that I'm just not digging it. But um, well, another scary thing too is the um, embargo doesn't li get off until. Uh, the day before or whatever. It's scary that you and know the embargo before I do. That's, I'm a usually, film that's not a good thing though. <laughs> no, that's not. You, you know, know it's, usually it's, a week or two before. Yeah. That's like, okay, they have faith in the film. You know, they're ready for it. It comes out on Thursday night and the screening's Wednesday night. That's not good. Most of the time. At least a week before. Well, not even that. You most of, most of the time, people who have print, as far as criticism, variety, all these places, have a Wednesday deadline. So, if they want their movie reviewed for print, they usually have to screen it before Wednesday. So once we see a film screened on Wednesday, not always, most of the time, it's not a good sign because they don't Studio want print. Studio don't have faith. They don't want print, yeah. So that's not, No, you it's know. not. The only thing that this movie has going for it is that it stars, I Tom think, Hardy. one of the better actors working right now. So Tom Hardy. hopefully he's able to pull it through. Pancreas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's our whole review of Pancreas, uh, but also Star is Born, Lungs. so I don't know if you're into Arch. the superhero stuff or you're into the Academy Award type stuff, but either way, you're going to get a double dose of chair at AMC Town Square next Thursday at 10 p.m. But before then, the night before then, we have a, an Academy Award worthy event our own. Sir, what's going down on Wednesday? How do you eat your way to a six-figure income, book signing event, it's going to be a lot of fun. Book number two is coming off the shelf. You're gonna be there, you're gonna be signing, you're gonna be talking to the great people. It's gonna be out for the first time. We want you to join us for that, so make sure to text this guy at 702. 348 Or comment below, or of course you can find his channel in the, that white dot up there with all of our other stuff that we do. And uh, you can screw on over his YouTube channel and you can find out all about it. But make sure to text this guy because you don't wanna be a part of this event. It's going, you don't wanna miss this event. You wanna be a part it's of it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a blast. Yeah, we have over 100 different types of sakes and beers. <laughs> We have unlimited food. You're not getting just a book. You're getting alcohol and food too. So if you love to drink, which I don't, but if you love to. How do you complain? You'll just take an Uber or a Lyft home because you're gonna be done. Then you go home, you read your book, and you come to the movie on Thursday and you have a great night. And we kick back and relax. Love it. ChasingSimba.com is known as. The Film Lore's website.